Good morning, everyone. It's Jack here at the Mindful Homestead. Some stuff going on today. We're gonna boil some more sap. Uh, we are going to possibly take out an arborvitae in the front yard that we need to get rid of for a while. The roots are a little bit close to the foundation of the house, which we don't necessarily want. Let's let the chickens out first. <laughs> I open that door behind me and they all run out that door over there right to the water crazy chickens so let's go collect our sap we may have sap to boil or we may not um, what happened a couple days ago was we had a pretty warm week and we didn't have enough sap to boil so I didn't boil anything and I'm wondering if the warm temps we had this week turned the sap that we have sour it's in red buckets, so it's hard to see if it's turned yellow. Uh, if it has turned yellow, it's gonna be no good, so we won't boil sap today. But if it's still clear, we'll, uh, we'll get boiling. not what I was hoping for so as you guys saw in that clip the sap was yellow and what that means is that over these warm temperatures we've had the last couple days this sap went bad there's naturally occurring bacteria in the environment and it can actually get in and take the sugar from the sap and spoil it essentially uh, you could boil this off but it's gonna taste funky and not necessarily be the best syrup so so what we'll do now is I will go around and I'll dump our four buckets out of the sap that's in there and we won't boil today. We'll probably have to boil one day this week. that seriously bummed me out you guys we had probably seven or eight gallons of sap and uh, no more we got to dump them all out so the new plan for the day is I'm gonna take a look at this arborvitae out front here and Jackie and I are gonna have a good discussion about whether or not we want to get rid of it Like, it'd be tough just to shape it. Like, right now, like, this is... Because you can see, it doesn't go very deep. No. And if we cut it, it can start getting all mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. So we're standing here trying to figure out if we're going to cut down this evergreen behind us. It's 
only gotten larger over the past four years that we've lived here and we've gone back and forth with cutting it down. So today we think we've settled on the fact that we're gonna cut it down just because of its size and everything. The only con I see is, I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but the chickadees love it because our bird feeder's right there. But I think overall it's probably time to, to cut it down. think it was a good decision yeah it looks so much better yeah so now that we've got that tree gone let's uh let's head down the driveway a little ways and take some of those other trees out that we've been wanting to expand and clear So I don't know how much of that the camera caught before, but the battery ran out and uh, I was in the zone. So I wasn't going to get a new battery. I'm a terrible YouTuber, I guess. But let's see what we got done today. Behind me is the Arborvitae. Um, it's out, which is awesome. Because as you can see, we now have all that space over there to put some new stuff in. We're not sure what we're gonna do yet. We're thinking of either a Nanking cherry or some other small bush cherry. Since that would look good in the spring, it would be ornamental with flowers and uh, also provide some edibles for us. 
Uh, other things in the running, a small pear tree, something that we could keep pruned really small, possibly some sort of fig. Uh, we can keep hardy figs around here and the trees end up looking pretty cool. So something in that spot though that we want to essentially cover up the electrical box and just provide, you know, a, a nice addition to the garden that also gives us something to eat. You can see I started taking out trees along this whole region here. I took a few there and then a few back that way over here. This is going to be a pretty long project. There's a lot of small scraggly trees in there and it's not really something. It's kind of tricky. They're in that zone where they're not small enough where I can just buzz them with the chainsaw and knock them over. Uh, but a lot of them are also not big enough where they've shaded out all the undergrowth. So if I had a skid steer or a track steer or a dozer, I could just come in and bulldoze them, but we don't have that. We've got a little Kubota and it's not necessarily gonna push these trees over. So you can see this was a big oak right here. And if we come over here, these were a bunch of maples and an oak. So we're just gonna haul the brush now over to that pile. And the last thing we're gonna do the day is we're going to take the arborvitae down to that other brush pile I made down there. So we'll hook this up with a toe strap and then go do that. This might be a little unconventional but since I don't have a tow bar on the tractor anytime I need to pull something with a tow strap what I'll do is I'll take the strap if it's got loops on the end and I'll run it under the tow bar there and then I'll just loop it around the arms and what that'll do is that'll pull down on the arms and then keep the load low you probably wouldn't want to do that with anything super heavy just because you could be putting a lot of pressure down on your three-point arms, but a tree like this that I can actually move without the tractor is not gonna put too much force on it. So let's get this thing moved.
What do you think? How many eggs did we get? I don't know. A lot. Hi, close to a dozen. All ready for Easter. We don't have to dye eggs. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. I think that's where we're gonna end it for today. We just put a chicken in the oven a few minutes ago, one of ours from last fall. And uh, yeah, it's getting cold. The fire's just about died out where we were burning the brush. So I think I'm gonna head inside and just have a, uh, a fairly mellow evening. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.